We'll be live in a second. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, episode 330. Each week we meet here to answer the questions asked on the uh, uh, SEO Questions community on Google Plus for commercial users and also the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. With us tonight, we have Tim Kappa. Tim is CEO of OnlineOwnership.com. Uh, he's also a Google product expert in the Google My Business uh, community. He's based in Corby, um, and you can find Tim at OnlineOwnership.com. David Razem, uh, Corby is uh, about 100 miles north of London. David Razam uh, lives in West Sussex. Uh, he's a leading internet marketer um, and uh, a copywriter of many years standing. Um, you can find David at writingforseo.org and davidrazam.com. All right, we have eight questions tonight, uh, all asked on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. Uh, let's get into them. Okay, this one from Ahmed Ibrahim. It's titled uh, Backlinks from Articles in Web 2.0 Websites. Uh, and Ahmed asks, uh, hello, guys. How effective is it to get backlinks from articles in Web 2.0 Websites? So I'm going to give you, it depends. <laughs> <laughs> and it all depends on where they've been created. Is it a standalone web, uh, web 2.0 article? If it's just a bulk standard, just, you know, standalone thing, just with an article, uh, it's going to be, it probably even be ignored. Um, it's got no, it's got no, contextual anything about it it's got no uh it's not within us it's not within a stand you know um, another site that is within a site that deals specifically with that particular um uh, product or query or whatever the case may be something like that nothing um something within a web 2.0 that is solely dealing with your um genre category product range yes probably more um but then again you know if you can chuck something in there have other people chuck something in there will it be seen quite clearly as um, an unnatural link from google um you know so there's a lot of variations what I will say in terms of what I, you know, I don't, I don't use these. I tend to rely on, on content on the site um, to generate links. And in fact, when you share it socially, you're effectively sharing it on a web 2.0 anyway. Um, so there you have it. Um, but I tell you, the one thing that I do actually use web 2.0 for is for example, with a uh, local business. Um, and I use a handful of them, not all, just a, you know, a handful, to actually create uh, citations. And so, you know, they're okay. But, you know, for an articles, the thing is massively, it depends. You know, it like depends on any, on any place where you, you've you know you've you've gotten you've gotten a link from you know and it depends how Google views it and sees it and it depends um, in the whole ecosystem of where it exists on whether it's going to do anything for you. Thank you, Tim. Yeah. The yes. The, the what Tim said uh, in spades. Yes. 
uh, the it's not the web 2.0 that give gives a link uh, uh, any uh, leverage we're talking about effectiveness for SEO I take it um, rather than effectiveness for anything else so yeah um, don't get hung up on web 2.0 get hung up on the content and the and the context um, yes I'm not going to say what Tim said again because Tim's already said it <laughs> all right I must point out um, Michael Martinez and, and others uh, like Rob Woods who um, answer questions on our dumb SEO questions Facebook group through the week as soon as people ask the question they usually get an answer um, or a number of answers and um, we, we're always on hand to review uh, the week's work and anyway we're particularly grateful to Michael Martinez and others uh, for their uh, contributions all right let's uh, go to our next at number two on our run list it's from Chris Marcus titled whole titles or part titles as anchor text he said I, I have a, a site that I write lifestyle news inside the articles I place internal links to important categories with the appropriate anchor text can I also use whole titles or part titles of relevant articles as anchor text uh, four plus words uh, inside the articles or is this a bad practice um, yeah it's fine you know you'll often say Blah, 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 blah. For more info, info, check out this article on and you'll do the whole title, half the title, whatever. Um, yeah, that's cool. You know, not a problem. Um, but one thing also, you know, to, to think about in terms of, you know, on your articles is to perhaps provide also in your sidebar um, you, you probably have already got something displaying, which is pretty common, saying uh, latest articles, and it's normally like five snippets, and the whole title of that is anchor texted anyway to that article. But you may also want to, which is very good, um, you know, uh, related articles, which a lot of people don't tend to use, but that, you know, you, you can get a plugin for it, or you can use your CSS and script it. Um, but basically it will give you know five related articles to that um uh, so if something's talking about cholesterol and your last five your last five recent articles were about um weight loss it's not related in any way for the user to actually view more stuff um but if you use if you use, uh, sorry, recent, but if you use a related plugin, then it's going to give you five based on cholesterol, you know, five recent ones, which, you know, uh, is good for the user. And it's the same similar concept of actually linking in the part or the whole thing. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, no problem. Thank you, Tim. Okay. Yeah. I, I don't have any problems with that either. I'm, I'm again. I'm not going to say what Tim has said because he said that already. But uh, I, if 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 the if the sentence leads naturally to to writing the the uh, title of a piece or title of a page, use it. Um, it if it makes sense, use it. Um, but don't go peppering your. Uh, your page with loads and loads of uh, of links to the same fitness to the same place repeating the uh, the title and whatever it will be a horrible read um, and it may it may get you in trouble with Google I'm not sure how they would uh, see that but I suspect um, there would be seen to be some kind of uh, jiggery pokery going along with keywords but um, yes just just do what seems right for, for your content make it a nice read thank you david all right let's go to the next this is question three on our run list from chai ip he said i have a dumb seo seo question 
uh, do I need to renew these data aggregators every year? Uh, no. Uh, if you used, if you used like a like EXT or something like that, which submits it to them, uh, yeah, you you might need to because I think if you remove EXT, they literally start pulling your stuff. Um, but if you built them, if you use them manually, no, no, you don't need to renew them. They there, that's it, job done. Um, but what I want to say is just, yeah, don't get hung up with these directories, submit them, forget about them, move on. Thank you, Tim. All right. Um, let's um, move on to the next. Ahmed Ibrahim has another question for us. Uh, it's titled Pages That Appear and disappear on search engine results pages. Ahmed said, uh, hello guys, I have some pages that appear and disappear on search engine result pages. What could cause this inconsistency and how can I overcome it? Well, there's no such thing as a, as a fixed position on, on the SERPs. They go, they got them down like a go-yo. Um, you know, if, if you're uh, at, at position 45 one week, you might be 25 the next, you might go down. Um, you will, they, they, if you're low in the SERPs, if you're somewhere in the 90s, say, uh, and you're using a typical tool to track your, uh, your key phrases, you will find that, that some of them will drop off. It's, uh, it's what they do. Um, the question is whether you um, whether you worry about that. Um, they're probably not generating very much uh, very much traffic for you if if they're down low and they've dropped off. So you know, I I'm always in favour of looking at those pages that are appearing for key phrases uh, that are appearing on pages two and three say and trying to get those up to one that will give you some some real leverage so you know it's go appearing and disappearing is just part of part of life <laughs> part of google um as google goes around and spiders content and feeds it into its algorithm um answers pop out and there may be uh, this week there may be more that uh, uh, that it thinks is better than yours, you know. It's 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 the way it is. Um, but you might want to talk about um, uh, glitches in Google Search Console, as other people have have done in the community answers. But um, I'll let you read those. I think it's just I think it's nothing to be worried about. It happens, and your. Um, and your pages that your your pages your key phrases that are low in the SERPs, um, unless there's something really really integral to your business, um, they're not where your uh, your your um, where, where your work should go to. Uh, it's it's not what you should be concentrating on. Thank you. Okay, let's uh, go to number five on our run list. We're 14 minutes in. JL Faverio asks uh, a t question titled, how to find places to get backlinks? Um, he said, how do you find niche blogs to contact for your backlink research campaign? Uh, other than searching search engine result pages, is there a query string or reputable database uh, online of active blogs uh, categorized by industry? Um, so I don't contact anyone. I create great stuff, create a, a yeah, and I know that's said like a million freaking times, but you know, within that, you tend to reference other things. You you then mention them online. You create a bit of a buzz going, and 
and you get a good chance of them contacting that site, you know, for uh, collaboration or things like that. So, but apart from that, um, <clears throat> yeah, if I'm looking at what someone's done uh, before in terms of a theme or a particular a particular search query, um, I'll use in URL blog, in URL dot up, you know, blog, in URL article. Don't forget in URL PDF. There are so many people over the years that have created brilliant stuff, but they chucked it in a PDF and it's not on site. So yeah, those are the ones I typically use. Thank you, Tim. I was just testing to see if it worked. Um, testing to see if what worked. Um, I, I was uh, just uh, a, a query that um, uh, Jay Alfaverio might use. I'm not sure if I'm looking at anything good. Um, no, 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 forget I even spoke. I, I sometimes wonder why I bother trying to look like I know what I'm doing. Um, anyway, <laughs> let's um, call that an answer and we'll, we'll move on from this one. Um, Micah Fisher Kirshner asked the question, and it's, a, it's actually more complex uh, than it looks. Uh, it's titled 301 redirect on a certificate error. Uh, and Micah said, um, if a site certificate error comes up, but the page just 301 redirects elsewhere to a different domain, does that matter? Yeah, well, it, it, is, it is complex uh, in that um, the certificate relates to a, a protocol. Um, and I think it's moot whether the 301 is going to work. Um, um, I mean, years ago it would work regardless, but these days um, um, Chrome and, and uh, Safari, uh, uh, Face, uh, Firefox, that they um, trap these uh, protocol errors and present a, you know, a insecure site warning. Um, so it wouldn't actually jump to the um, 301 redirect, I don't think, anyway. But uh, I see Tony McCreef, that Adelaide's leading uh, SEO, um, had a comment there. And... Um, Richard Hearn, um, we're just about to be joined by William Rock. Um, I'm going to say what uh, Richard said. <laughs> okay. Hello, William Rock. Hey, everybody. You all right? William is an SEO based in Kansas, in the U US Midwest. Is that is that the Midwest? Yeah, the Midwest. Yeah. Okay. What time is it over there, man? Uh, nine o two a.m. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, um, anyway, for question six, um, Richard Hearn um, has provided. Um, an answer which you can back in uh, will be accurate. Okay, number seven, Nimi Gill asked the question, LLC versus without the LLC in citations. Um, LLC is um, the US um, in, in Australia or um, the UK, we would call it a company, a proprietary limited company, but... Um, Anyway, uh, yeah, uh, it doesn't make a 
doesn't make a difference. Um, zero effect, really. Uh, Google can understand, you know, it's the name, it's not LLC on the end, whether it's a limited liability, limited liable liability company or not. Um, it's the name, the location. Um, that is the actual thing they can figure out if something is saying LLC on the end, uh, and if it's not, but it's this exact same name at the exact same location, doesn't make a difference. Um, yeah. Uh, and then you ask about hiding addresses. Well, that was another record. That was another thing. Look, so if you're an LLC, <laughs> you're pretty much a company. You're registered with the Secretary of State. Secretary of State has your address. That's public record information. Why would you then go and create your listing, your GMB listing, as a service area business that nobody can visit? Uh, and then try and find the citations out there in the directories that allow you to hide the address. It like literally doesn't make sense. Just no sense whatsoever. You know, you, you know, they work from their home. <sighs> right. So then if they work from their home under GMB, they have to be, they have, you have to hide their address. Um, well, you don't have to because if it's got signage outside, Customers can come to that location. So this is the criteria. Do customers come to that location or do they serve customers from that location? And that is your criteria. And that is whether you leave it as a business at that address or whether it stays uh, hidden. In terms of the LLC in the name, well, we've already discussed that, doesn't matter. Um, but obviously if they're registered, then they're, 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 it's going to be public anyway. Um, but equally, you know, not all your, not all of your um, directories are going to allow you to hide an address. Um, so, look, I think they just need to get over it, you know, at first instance with Secretary of State and an LLC, you are in the public domain with that address. They need to get over it, right, if you work from home. If they freaked out because it's their home address, well, GMB will at least remove that. But somebody could quite easily search it and find the Secretary of State records, which are public record, and find their address. So by saying that, like one and one, it's like it's a bit, it's a bit naff. It's a bit of a naff argument because it's already online. It's already there. Just because Google doesn't display it or not. Um, so yeah, you need you need to just explain these things to them. Hello, Micah Fisher Kirshner. Michael, Hello. Um, um, what, what, um, um, senior SEO for Turn River Capital in the United States, uh, not uh, too far from Silicon Valley. He's on the east coast of the USA. West coast. Yes. Yeah, oh, west coast. That's right. Yeah. Northern Hemisphere, that's the better side of the uh, climate. Yeah. I guess that's not true, the Northern, it's all, all, most of the time, West, Western side has a good, good uh, climate. Well, I must ask you about Paris, um, but first we've got to answer this uh, last question. Um, Nazman Naha asked a question titled, Avoiding the Duplicate Content Issue. Uh, Nazman said, hi guys, I'd like to start hosting paid press releases on our website to get some extra revenue in, but I'm not sure about the best way to avoid the duplicate content issue. Should be more concerned about the selling links issue. Um, he said, should I use nofollow or rel canonical uh, to the original source of the content? Also, I would appreciate your advice about the um, length, uh, tag, etc." So this sounds like kind of syndication. Um, yeah, you just put a canonical tag uh, referencing back to the original um, source. That should generally cover everything you want. In theory, you shouldn't be needing to nofollow any of the links. Um, and 
I'm not sure kind of on the, the other subsequent questions because uh, length of press releases is not dictated by you if you're going to be hosting them. It should be, you know, dictated kind of by the third parties. So uh, that part kind of is a little confusing. Um, but in terms of general press release, I mean, that's that's a different area kind of, you know, what people normally see versus what's useful from an SEO standpoint. Um, kind of not really related, in, in my opinion. Thank you, Micah. Anybody else before we go? It's our last question. Okay, so I think when I click this button, it will say, yes, it's thank you for watching time. Um, we have answered all of the questions asked on the uh, uh, Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. We'll be back um, at the same time next week um, to do this uh, all again. Um, but first, uh, I thank uh, Tim Kappa, um, Micah Fisher Kirshner, William Rock, and uh, David Rosam for their uh, efforts and also. Uh, uh, people on our uh, Facebook group like Michael Martinez. Uh, for that, we're uh, truly thankful. Um, we'll see you here next week.